What's going on everybody? Welcome to Arrival Entertainment and today we're going to be talking about Halloween Kills, the next entry in the long-running Halloween franchise. Halloween Kills is the sequel to Halloween, which was a sequel to Halloween. Not that Halloween, but the original Halloween. Halloween Kills is the 12th entry in the Halloween series, but it's technically Halloween 3 because the 2018 Halloween was a direct sequel to the original Halloween, so that Halloween was technically Halloween 2, and Halloween Kills is now technically Halloween Halloween 3. Confused yet? But wait, there's more. Halloween Ends is going to be the next entry coming out next year, which is the 13th entry in the Halloween series, but technically that's going to be Halloween 4, ignoring the events of the original Halloween 4. The Halloween franchise has already been a gigantic mess, so why try to make sense of it now? If you didn't see my review for Halloween 2018, then you should know that I am a big fan of the Halloween franchise, despite me acknowledging that half of the movies aren't really all that good. I mainly love the Halloween franchise just because they're fun to watch. Even the lesser movies or the movies that I downright hate in the franchise, there's still entertainment value to have of them. They're not masterpieces of horror like the original Halloween was. The sequels are just entertaining to watch during the Halloween season. That's why I love the franchise. And I thought that retconning the rest of the Halloween sequels with the 2018 Halloween film was a pretty ballsy move, especially since so many horror fans have such nostalgic connections to those movies, but I understood why they did it. The timelines are all over the place with the franchise, so why try to make sense of it? Going off in a new direction with a new timeline did seem like the best idea. So, we got a new Halloween movie, Halloween Kills, which takes place immediately after the last film, Halloween 2018, so how is it? Well, being a huge fan of the franchise, I obviously was looking forward to this movie, despite some mixed to negative reviews that I was seeing before I saw the film. I was seeing all different types of reactions to this movie, and leaving the theater, I gotta admit, I don't fully understand most of it. I thought this was a pretty fun and entertaining Halloween movie. Is it as good as a 2018 film? Probably not. I think the 2018 film is just a little bit of a better movie. And is it better than the original? Hell no. I've come to accept that none of the Halloween sequels are going to match the original by any means. But I did enjoy myself while watching this film. I thought it was the perfect type of entertainment that these sequels were trying to do. It was fun seeing Lori, her daughter Karen, and her granddaughter Allison being back in this movie. Those two having more to do in this movie than they did in the previous movie. Some fans have pointed out, and it's true, that Jamie Lee Curtis doesn't really do a lot in this movie. In fact, she doesn't even really do anything. She just kind of sits around in the hospital bed, and that's because she was badly injured in the last movie. So I can understand why they did that. They did give more for her daughter and granddaughter to do in this movie, and they did introduce characters from the previous Halloween movie back into this movie, and they gave them a lot more to do. I don't consider it a spoiler because it was very heavily advertised in the trailers, but Tommy Doyle is back, Lindsay Wallace is back, Marion Chambers is back, Lonnie is back, and Sheriff Brackett is back in this movie, and they all have a lot to do in this movie, and that's because, like I said, Lori's injured, and she doesn't have much to do in this movie, so giving time to those characters I thought was a pretty nice surprise. I know the big question on everybody's mind is how did Michael survive that fire? They even say in the trailer, no man could survive that fire. Well, I'm not gonna spoil what happens, but I, when I saw it, I did say to myself, oh yeah, okay, that's, that's a pretty good answer. If you saw the trailers, you know that a firefighting team goes to take out the fire, so you kinda know half of how he gets out, but there's still a big, not a big, but there's still a portion of it that they didn't show, which I appreciated. And speaking of Michael, he is so brutal in this movie, and it was so cool to see. I don't care what the fan base says, I think this Michael in this movie is the most bloody and brutal and unforgiving Michael Myers has ever been in the entire franchise. Yes, he's brutal in Halloween 6, yes, he's brutal in the Rob Zombie movies, but I was more affected by how he killed people in this movie than I did in those movies. And that's probably because they did focus a lot on making Michael more scary in this movie, more akin to the original film. Because in the original film, again, they took away, they didn't even mention the brother and sister dynamic with Laurie and Michael. So playing with the whole, the mysterious killer aspect, you don't know why he's killing these people, it is more scary. And now in this movie, he's angry. He's he just wants to kill after being taken down by Lori and her daughter and granddaughter in the previous movie, so he's just letting loose on everybody, again, with no motivation, no one clear objective, just to kill. And that was, in my opinion, 
pretty terrifying to see. The music is of course great in this movie. John Carpenter, his son, and I forgot the other composer's name. They all came back from the previous movie to do the score for this movie, and they delivered another solid soundtrack. The opening for the credits was a nice little mix here and there of the classic Halloween theme and it's sprinkled out throughout the entire movie. The score is fantastic. We all knew the score was gonna be great going into the film. And I like how atmospheric this movie is. This movie feels like fall. It feels like the Halloween season. One of the biggest complaints with the 2018 film was that some of that atmosphere that they captured here and there wasn't really felt throughout the entire movie. Again, it was only felt here and there. Well, in this movie, it's felt throughout the entire film, and that's probably because it takes place the exact same night as the 2018 film. So they focused a lot more on the atmosphere of this movie, which was well handled. And of course in the trailers, this is not a spoiler because it was mentioned in the trailers, there's a mob mentality in this movie, and without giving stuff away, I thought that was handled as best as they could have, and I like the fact that there was actual consequences for doing something like that. It was... They tried to put some commentary in there, and the commentary didn't really work all that well. It felt pretty shoehorned in, but the uh, consequences for this mob mentality, I thought it was pretty good. I actually liked that they actually mentioned it instead of just you know, a mob goes after Michael Myers and, you know, there's no consequences or whatever. No, there's actual stakes and consequences in this film. However, the film doesn't really advance the story in any type of way. This movie is more of a filler film to get to the next film. Without spoiling it, again, I'm not getting into spoilers with this, but there is something that gets the ball going on the final confrontation that we're gonna see in the next film. And that's really only the, the only thing that's there to advance the story along. It's just really to get us to the next movie. So if you were disappointed with this movie because this film does just feel like a filler movie to get to the next one, I can understand that. But some of the complaints I've been seeing I don't quite understand. The two major complaints that everyone has been mentioning in this movie is that there is some bad line delivery, clunky dialogue, and very bad decisions made by characters in this movie. Well, I think that's pretty hypocritical because most, if not all, slasher movies have one or all of those elements in there. I'm not kidding, I'm seeing people that are just completely trashing this movie because of those aspects alone and I just keep saying to myself, every Halloween movie has something like that. Every Halloween movie either has bad or clunky dialogue or terrible decisions made by characters. This isn't something new. And yeah, it is annoying seeing bad decisions made by characters, but again, it's kind of becoming the norm for slasher movies. You want to see the killer kill a bunch of people. And you need some dumb decisions every now and then for the for blood and gore sake and for the like i said you want to see the killer kill people so to me i don't think that's fully fair that this movie is getting completely shitted on because of those reasons alone i mean are we really going to talk crap about this movie and say it's the worst halloween movie because the line that's in the movie evil dies tonight was poorly delivered or a line from tommy or some other character was poorly delivered when lines from the original Halloween movie were poorly delivered too? Don't get me wrong, I love the original Halloween movie, it's my favorite horror movie, but I do acknowledge there's some pretty terrible acting in that movie. So why doesn't that film get completely crapped on because of the bad line delivery or poor decisions? But this film is. I just think it's a little bit hypocritical for people to say it's the worst entry in the series because of those reasons. And I have seen a lot of people mainly say it is because of just those reasons. To me, that stuff is just kind of what to expect when it comes to slasher movies. Like I said, most if not all slasher movies, in my eyes at least, again, it, it's all opinion based, has dumb decisions or corny or bad line delivery. It's just what I would expect at this point. So yeah, it is worth mentioning that this film does have that stuff, but the fact that people are saying that this is the worst Halloween film because of that stuff, I don't think is fair at all. So overall, I do think this is a pretty fun and enjoyable Halloween film, and I can't wait to see it again. It doesn't advance the story along in any way, but at the same time, this is the 12th entry in the series. I'm not expecting some big character arc or twist and turns here and there to advance the story along. It's okay to have a slasher movie or horror movie in general. Just kind of be 
like this. Just watchable. It's fun. It's cozy. It's very atmospheric. And it's an, it's enjoyable to watch. I don't know. I, like I said, a lot of people are trashing this movie. And when I left the theater, I said to myself, I don't really understand that. It's a fun movie. If you don't like it, that's completely fine. But I think it's really dumb that everyone is just pinpointing little things here and there and then declaring it the worst in the entire series. That's that's whatever. Again, that's your opinion. I just don't see it. I had fun with this film. I thought it was really cool seeing some of the original characters from the original film. I thought the kill scenes were pretty good. There's one kill in this movie, and I have to mention it. I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a kill in this movie that made me laugh so hard I had to force myself to stop laughing because I was starting to get a little too loud. Uh, I'm not going to say what happens, but it involves a gun and a car door. That's all I'm going to say. It was so stupid. I loved it. <laughs> and I can't wait to see the movie again just to see that scene again. It's just... <laughs> So yeah, the movie is definitely entertaining, and I do recommend seeing this movie, especially if you're a fan of the Halloween franchise. I don't think this movie quite deserves the hate it's getting. It's got issues here and there, yeah, but really, what did you expect at this point? I Again, I'm not expecting big character arcs with this film, or I'm not, I don't expect any of these movies to be as good as the original film. I just want to be entertained with these movies, and have it feel like Halloween. And if I get that in a Halloween sequel, that's good enough for me. So with that being said, I do recommend seeing the film, and I think it's worth a Blu-ray purchase. In fact, I'm excited to pick up the Blu-ray because David Gordon Green confirmed that there is going to be an extended cut with an alternate ending on Blu-ray. So that's going to be very fun to see. I'm curious to see what that alternate ending is, or just what additional stuff they put in the film. So guys, that's my review for Halloween Kills. Just like always, let me know in the comment section what you thought of the film, and where does it rank in your Halloween ranking? Um, I might do a re-ranking either, either this year or when Halloween Ends comes out next year. Probably when Halloween Ends comes out. That way I can do the entire franchise. But whatever your thoughts on everything is, let me know down in the comment section. And just like always, guys, thank you again, as always, for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and share it. Subscribe right here if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, take care.